you had mentioned a while ago that you'd watched the documentary you cannot kill david arquette i was late to the party i hadn't seen it yet but i finally seen it i'd also seen the nick gage dark side of the ring which also explored that match that gage and arquette had um yeah. i mean so i watched it today and the thing about the you the the you cannot kill david arquette documentary is by the end of it i just felt quite sad um i felt like you know he he's someone you know in the documentary the story is essentially he had this thing in wcw that happened he became public enemy number one in wrestling and then what i couldn't understand the correlation was he then thought that by doing backyard wrestling and by doing sort of quite violent independent wrestling that he would kind of the wrestling fa fans would fall in love with him and it just seemed like quite a a no-win situation going in um but i mean overall what did you did you come out of the documentary feeling that arquette was sort of justified in what he was trying to do um, how did you feel about it generally i mean i just found it to be a strange documentary i mean he's trying to portray himself as this downtrodden guy and he's living in this mansion in the you know well maybe not a mansion but a, a very expensive house in like the hollywood hills he's got like the perfect life uh you know he's got his new wife he's got his kids he's got all these expensive toys i mean this is the farthest you could get from randy the ram robinson isn't it the wrestler and it was almost <laughs> like that's what he was portraying himself as as this like washed up actor who hadn't worked in years um and, you know and he's still involved in executive producing things and he's still he's still working so it just all felt manufactured the documentary we're trying to create this sense of woe that and, and this you know hole that he was in that he needed to climb out of so that didn't really uh resonate with me that didn't really strike me as being authentic and um, i did like the i did like the documentary i thought he came across sort of likable as the thing wore wrong in some ways he didn't because she says he's there wanting to redeem himself in the eyes of the wrestling public for the you know his wcw world title reign from april to may 2000 you know the height of vince russo's second reign of terror actually wasn't the height that was the beginning really that was when we, we knew that things were not going to improve they were not going to be better second time round for vince russo and wcw in fact they were going to be worse and we should also thank Tony Schiavone for suggesting that David Arquette become world champion. That was his idea, everyone. So thank you, Tony, for suggesting that. And apparently <laughs> Vince Russo's eyes lit up and he thought it was a brilliant idea. Well, Ruined no, David Arquette's life. Ruined the poor man's life. You know, now he's oh. now he's now he's, he's he's getting bloodied with cheese graters to try and make up because the other thing I don't get is that the people, you know, the independent wrestling fans and especially in the places where he's going which are smaller you know i mean he was in a backyard in the movie he was in yeah. a literal backyard wrestling show yeah. but like they are not the wcw fans from 2000 yeah. but they're I, I don't think they care and i i i, I and, and i mean the other testament is that in in all the years since um 2000 when he was in wcw wwe i think brought him in one time as a guest host at some point but you know there was periods yeah. where like he was front row at wrestlemania 21 yeah. when hogan came out and he was barely mentioned on camera so like he it does seem like mainstream wrestling just doesn't really want anything to do with him because they see him i guess maybe as this symbol of that thing from wcw yeah i mean he's got this really bad stigma attached to him and and it seemed like you cannot kill david arquette was designed to alleviate that eradicate that and he really didn't um and then then he goes and does some real training at a wrestling school and he's he's definitely got flair for this he goes down to mexico now what was quite inspiring about it was that he got himself into tremendous physical shape i mean he looked mm -hmm. amazing um, in his 50s and he's, as well and he's what sorry kenny i said he's in his 50s as well so to to get i mean look, you're already in shape fan, but to get in shape <laughs> <laughs> in your 50s is is another matter but like you know he's got himself in like shape that would be very hard for someone you know in their 30s to do never mind uh, yeah. at his age yeah absolutely so i mean he was really applying himself he you know quit smoking he cut down on the drinking 
Um, this was something that he was clearly dedicated to, and that's what made it very curious to me that he would go down these avenues of backyarding where he wasn't going to win over respect from the people that he was seeking to earn admir admiration from by, you know, mm -hmm. by doing it properly and becoming a wrestler and showing respect for the business, uh, which was, you know, the book on him that he's a guy who swanned him back in 2000, became champion. And, uh, you know, what an insult to the business it was. And of course it was. And he realized that at the time. He was a fan. We know he's a fan. We saw footage of him watching wrestling and getting, was it Rand, did it, was it Randy Savage and Elizabeth tattoo? I think he got, didn't he, in the documentary? <laughs> well, he yeah, was I think so. Like he's obviously a fan. He obviously respects the biz. And he was really trying that. He went down to Mexico. Um, and I thought he did well there. You know, by the end of the, close to the end of the documentary before he has the garbage match with Nick Gage, you know, he has a match with someone and you can see that he's he's actually pretty good for this. He's got an instinct, he's got instincts for it, he's got flair for it, he knows what to do. He understands the timing, the crowd working. I think he's somebody who actually could be a star on some level, not for a long period of time, but just for a short run. And I think mm -hmm. Impact Wrestling or AEW could do worse than bring him in. You know, just for a short run, you know, with that yeah. same redemption storyline, which he's never truly done. 